So I'm delighted to be with Will Stokes, Will Stokes from CoSpace. So Will, you're speaking at the Commercial uh, Property Summit um, in March. It's um, quite soon to be fair, March 2020. It is. About two weeks, isn't it? Yeah. uh, Literally just uh, almost uh, three weeks. So um, depends when the listeners are listening to this video. Of course, it might be past it might uh, still be a day or two to go Um, the key thing though is to really understand will's business of co-space so look i understand a little bit about co-working myself i'm based in a co-working space Uh, i've been part of a co-working organization in terms of an end user for the last two years um, and used traditional business centers before that like regis as well so um, obviously i see the differences um, I have to admit, obviously, you know, it's nice to be based in a co-working space. It, but let's just focus on yourself, Will, and, and, and co-space. So um, I believe it's not just yourself. So there's a number of other people who are key parts of the organization, which evolved from um, previous company with, with Mark Stokes. Is that right, your uncle? Yes. Yeah. So um, in co-space, there's the, the main kind of shareholders are myself, Alistair, Thomas, and Paul Luke. So Alistair has a background in corporate finance. Uh, He built a business and sold it and kind of came back to London and lived the bachelor lifestyle. And then we both got, we we both met funnily enough through a few investments and got chatting and kind of had this model and this idea for co-working space that was taking a London feel and a London design outside of London. Um, And Paul Luke was one of our first investors that we, we kind of brought into the business. Uh, He has a background in banking and was head of emerging markets at Deutsche Bank for about 20 years. So CoSpace, in terms of its evolve from being involved in uh, Mark Stokes, um, young called, so do you want to just explain how the transition from traditional apartments to um, literally moving into the CoSpace? Yeah, sure. So, um, so, so for those that don't know my background, my background was heavily involved with Equa, um, which is Mark's business. Um, we kind of helped to set that up back in, it's late, like 2015, 2016 now. And that's a commercial trade developer doing between 150 and 250 apartments a year. So we typically take, you know, office blocks um, under PD or grade two listed office blocks that would go for full planning. Probably one out of three would have full planning and turn that into apartments. Now, my my where my gut is for property i love new build i don't like the conversion side of things so i was always leaning more towards what new build projects could we have and alongside of this i was watching what was happening with the the high street and retail and i was starting to see councils becoming more lenient on you know councils absolutely love mixed use schemes they're they're fully down for some form of commercial with resi on the top now that the retail is kind of changing and most councils most kind of regional areas have this same demographic so i started looking well, what could we do with these buildings? Could we turn these into kind of co-working, serviced office, and what would that look like? And we kind of, I mean, it was back in like 2017, we wrote the original business plan. And we're like, well, this is what it would look like. And this is how we'd execute it. And where we are now and what we're doing now is just totally different to what that model looked like, but mainly because we've evolved and realized that the demand is in certain areas. And actually, economic-wise, we can do better, bigger deals as opposed to multiple small deals, if that makes sense. Well, when you say smaller sites, is that right? Yeah. So, our, I mean, our original model was to go after small co-working spaces that were kind of 4,000, 6,000 square foot at most. Um, and what we would do is we'd do a majority of co-working and then a little bit of serviced office. And so, what what, we well, sorry. Yeah. So, for the listeners out there who, you know, we work as one of the big names, what would yeah. they typically focus on terms of, I know you say you don't focus on four to 6,000 anymore. What, yeah. what, just, just to give the listeners out there, um, what would we work be focusing on in terms of square footage roughly? Or is that quite hard to say? It's, yeah, it is and it isn't. It depends on locations, but I think having been to many of their location, locations, they're circa 100,000 square foot. Wow. And, yeah. And now in terms of your square footage, and I know it's yeah, so, co-working, it's not all about square footage whatsoever, but what, what do you... 100%. Yeah, what, so what, I mean, ours is, Reading is 13,500 square foot, um, Stevenage is 16,000 square foot, and a site that we're currently progressing in Wakefield is 22,000 square foot. Okay. So we we want to be, be anywhere between 10 
to 20,000 square foot location dependent. Um, that kind of 15,000 square foot middle is our sweet spot. And what we'll tend to do is 75%, which is serviced office space. Because I launched a test site back in Lincoln, so it's probably worth mentioning this. Um, I launched a test site in Lincoln that was a small co-working space. And we quickly adapted that because the demand was pushing towards office space. So we quickly realized that in multiple markets, and we, we met with multiple agents and multiple brokers in Reading and Stevenage, and realized that the market was the kind of four to six to 10 person offices as opposed to the co-working. Co-working is cool and people want that space, but where you make your kind of backbone of your revenue is on serviced office space. So that's why we pushed more down those sizes and, and down that route of 75% serviced office, 15% co-working and 10% kind of auxiliary. 15 and 10% sorry well what did you say the, the other 10% would be breakout space meeting rooms these kind of things um, okay yeah and, it, and it's quite weird how much your model relies on meeting space as well meeting space is is, is key and, and there's a huge demand for quality meeting space sure well what, why do you think there's so much interest in meeting space because I, I come from you know booking numerous hotel venues uh, for my events and so forth yeah so you know i understand you can book a hotel room conference rooms um so why is meeting space so crucial well it's all about having flexible space and space that's the right size so for instance me and ali have a board we call it a board meeting um and we hold that at another operator in london so you know the reason why because it's cost effective and we can get the perfect size room that we need for the amount of time that we need at any given point when we went to Stevenage, we realized that there's a huge shortage of meeting space. In fact, the council have their meeting rooms constantly booked out. So one of the first things they said to us was, well, can we take some of your meeting space? And the answer is always yes. Um, so it, it's, it's looking in certain areas. I mean, you might go to another area and there's a surplus of it and you don't need to do it as well. But what you need to do with it, with any, and it's the same with any business model, is absolutely understand what market you're going into. Our model is this, but each market is individually different. You know, Wakefield demographic and marketplace is totally different to a Reading demographic and marketplace. So you've got to adapt the space to what the requirement is in that area okay. and be willing to change it as well. So we, so we build in changeability as well. Well, you, you survived the test which people talk about often, which is the one year 95% or 90%. I'm not even sure where people get these statistics from fail. And it may not even be right. But the key thing is, how do you differentiate yourself from a different co-working space? Um, because you may do... Well, very, some... Yeah, we, I mean, we're, we're very fortunate and hopefully nobody's going to listen to this and, and want to be our competition. But, you know, well, if you if you look at London, I mean, you're in. I know the space that you're in now, and and those guys, and I know one of the founders really well, and th they've got their model. But everybody's battling it out in central London. When you go to more regional locations, your typical competition is Regis and other business centres. So the markets are a little bit cooler. So you've almost got to warm them up. We just we don't layer in costs. What, what the cost that you get is the final cost that you'll ever have. Like the answer is always yes, whatever you need, and then that's the fix cost um we don't try and layer in costs things like that and we just you try mean and sometimes some, some places will put additional costings for wi-fi or yeah exactly when... that everything's included everything's okay. included yeah but is that everything's included if you're 75 percent surface office but if you're the 15 percent the co-working then there may be add-ons no no whatever membership level so we only really offer four membership levels so the first one is hot desking where you can float in and out and if you need a space and you need to be in other areas you can go and do that um the second one is that our dedicated membership so if you want to just have a dedicated desk and work in a desk every day for a month two months three months whatever you go to that if you're an office member then you can do that and that's the other membership and then the final one is virtual membership which is you know if you just need a registered address Post box. somewhere to forward your mail yeah that kind yeah. of thing um, okay. and with all those the costs are fixed the, co the cost is that and everything that you need is included sure look some people may be thinking is it possible for us to do you know create a co-working space although you talk about people sometimes think rather than you know create a new co-working space there are people coming into your company as investors who think look you've created that brand we don't want to spend time creating a brand again you know we just want to invest in you what what makes your brand so strong will um 
So we spent, we spent a lot of time building the brand. We engaged with a company based in London who deal in the hospitality and restaurant sector. Um, and the idea was we wanted to take that kind of London vibe and take it outside of London. That was the whole idea. So they've guided us on our brand, on everything that we need to achieve and that entire piece. Um, so so what, the reason that our brand is as good as it is is because me and Ali had no involvement in it. We got the guys with the skill set that knew it and we made sure that they didn't have a background in office space because every single branding agency that we met, they were all kind of going down the business centre route. We were like, we don't want to do that. We want to be that kind of, we're almost like a hotel. We're almost branded like a hotel. The idea is we want to be like the Hilton of office space. Okay. So that's what we focus on building. So, well, so apologies. I didn't cover the metrics in terms of how many co-working spaces you have operating now um, yeah. and a little bit about the company as well. So yeah, it fine. started in Lincoln. It's yes. expanded. So do you yeah, want to just so explain? Have, yeah. So we have Lincoln. Um, we have Reading, which is literally due to launch in a couple of months and we're already pre-letting. So we've got about 35 to 40% pre-let already. Um, Stevenage is due to open in, I think it'll be August at this rate. And then we're acquiring a site in Wakefield that as soon as the purchase goes through will be operational, you know, within a couple of weeks, but it's all hinging on a purchase. Okay. So does that, am I right in saying that will bring you up to four bases or is there two bases in Lincoln? Have I got that no, right? That, that would be that would be four. Four. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of, we, we focus briefly on your brand. Um, what, what what do typical investors ask you? Because are, are some investors who invest in co-working spaces investing in other co-working spaces, or is it just yours, or do they like you, or, or yeah, what is it? So. I mean, the, the investor model, the investor pool in this sector is a lot smaller. And the reason it's a lot smaller is that the serviced office, the kind of commercial property sector that we're in, is one of the only business models that doesn't qualify for SEIS or EIS relief. So it doesn't qualify for investor tax relief. So the investor pool that you're now dealing with isn't an investor that's going to take a punt and go, well, if I, the investment loses, I'll only lose 25%, but the upshare could be X. You're dealing with serious grade investors and and most is, that, is that the same will with tech hubs like uh, second home i think it's called second home is um, that quite a tricky if, question if they have a tech slant they can tend to fall under some eis bracket or seis bracket um as far as i'm aware i don't know what their model is and i would imagine they probably would qualify for something we don't so the conversation we have is, is literally look this is the work we've done to date this is our brand this is the spaces we have to get open you know this is our, our we're very fortunate our model works very conservatively we need 65 percent occupancy or just below to actually break even and we only have a model at 85 percent occupancy is 100 percent occupied so if we get space to 90 percent occupied it's totally happy days because we've never forecast to go to that level we've only forecast to go to 85 percent so that we've always got that buffer and we always go well this is what we think the revenue will be and if it is higher then great mm. so i think you know it's being conservative with the investors but also being fully transparent and going, look, this is where we're at, this is where we're trying to get to, and this is how we're going to get there. And this is what we need to get to that journey. What what would be some of the takeaways from your presentation, Will? What what should people be expecting to get from you at the commercial summit on the 7th of March? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to talk a little bit briefly about my background with Equa and a little bit of detail in terms of some of the developments we've done, um, my track record in property. And then I'm going to talk about some of the case studies that we've got in Reading, some of the deals that we've structured, because some of the... I mean, you know, until I, uh, you know, I'll, 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 um, I'll show you on stage. It'll be great to see. But some of the deals that we've done are just incredible deals. And you wouldn't, you know, if you went into a, an agent right now, you wouldn't get the kind of deals that we've managed to structure, you know, from the point of view of a landlord paying for 90% of the capital expense of a fit out. Um, and that, that's our Reading site in terms of landlord is paying 90% of a fit out. So it's, it's A, the kind of deals that we've structured and B, what we're doing, how we're going to grow the brand, how we're going to expand and so on. Well, just one or two final questions. One is, what opportunities are you looking for at the commercial summit? So I've asked about give, but get what is it? Literally, you're open to conversations with investors, or is it a little bit more than just that? No, absolutely. I mean, we're we're raising funding round now, so any investors that are interested are more than happy to have a chat, have a coffee with, and we can discuss. Um, it's more about getting our brand out there and seeing who we can work with, because the other side of it is actually the landlord side you know if you're a landlord and you've got a 12 14 15,000 square foot site 
and you don't know what to do with it, I'd love to have a chat and, and we'd agree something. I mean, we can do multiple options, which is a straight lease. We could do a profit share. Um, we're doing a profit share on a deal that's going through at the minute. I haven't spoke about it before because it's still going through, but that's a separate site, which will be probably site five or six. And that's a revenue share with the landlord because they want to be involved in this sector, but they don't know how to deliver it. So we said, well, look, we'll pay you a peppercorn lease rate and then we'll do a revenue share and you can have a share in the profits. So, so in terms of the geographical spread, you're interested in having conversations with landlords. I take it is the England, Southeast or a little bit. Yes. F- yeah, not, 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 not any further than the southern half of England or is that? No, slightly- no, we'll go, we'll go further. I mean, we went and spent two days in Newcastle looking at opportunities there. There was nothing that came off. There wasn't any deals that we thought were right for the business, but we're, we're, we're happy to look in most locations. The idea when you when you get, sorry well when you say the deals didn't stack up in Newcastle partly because the sites weren't there but or the the revenue wasn't there or mixture it was the size of the sites weren't there so there was a lot of sites uh, around the kind of ten thousand square foot whereas there we'd probably want fifteen sixteen thousand square foot and there wasn't anything in the marketplace at that size um, there was one deal that we found that was eight thousand and another floor at eight thousand but it was two separate owners. One was to let, one was to buy. So we were kind of figuring out a way we could structure that deal, but it, it didn't ever really get to where it needed to. Well, I just want to say a massive thanks for taking time out this afternoon. I look forward to seeing you on the 7th of March at the Commercial Property Summit. Um, a really interesting subject, and it's it's interesting. Co-working, I was speaking to Grace earlier about apart hotels, and I can see some similarities, to be fair, between the two of them even though to an external audience, you might not consider it. So I really look forward to seeing you there on the 7th of March. I want to say massive thanks for taking time out both today. I know we had some technical glitches, so it took a little while longer. And also on the um, 7th of March as well. So massive thanks, Will. Massive thanks to the listeners.